What's up folks? Today I'm going to talk about five indications you might be a noob distro hopper. Let's get into it. So I left one to the very, very end. That's not part of these five. And the reason why is because this one is actually the biggest indicator that you are a noob distro hopper. Number five, you always use other people's dot files. Yes, you know, it's one thing to look at other people's dot files and get ideas and make them your own, which is what a lot of seasoned Linux users do. But there's a lot of people like when you're just starting out, you just copy and paste a lot of crap that you don't even know how it actually works. And then like, you know, sometime down the road, you kind of discover that, you know, what you copy and pasted wasn't what you needed or, or, are you following me? Um, maybe it was way cooler than you ever imagined. Number four, you use VMware or Oracle VirtualBox instead of KEMU with Vert Manager or Proxmox. Yes, honestly, if you don't know the virtues of Vert Manager or or Proxmox, which is totally cool and something that I'm working on setting up right now, I have to tell you, you just haven't lived you just haven't discovered like the coolest thing on linux right now and when it comes to hypervisors and that sort of thing honestly you just gotta get with the program man <laughs> there's just no other way to put it okay number three by the way i use arch now there are some content creators who know a lot about the linux ecosystem who use arch linux and there are a few reasons for it, mainly the aur and getting some packages that they need to make their operating system work with as little fuss as possible i get it and i don't fault those people i really don't however i will say that there are just as many uh, of those uh, BTW, I use Arch people who really don't know anything about Linux and they go from, you know, uh, Arch derivative to Arch derivative. And then after a while, they migrate to other operating systems such as <laughs> OpenSUSE even. You might know who I'm talking about. But anyway, they don't really know much about the Linux ecosystem, and they don't realize that it isn't the operating system. Okay? You can do everything on Fedora that you can do on Arch. That is an absolute fact. Number two, does it come with flat packs by default? Now, you could, you know, put snaps in there, app images. It really doesn't matter. They a lot of people who are distro hopping they want to know if their favorite sandbox uh, technology uh, comes with their distro by default. Usually it's flat packs or snaps or maybe even app in images. But the simple fact of the matter is is none of that is really hard to set up. So I don't even know why that's an issue. But I have heard this question on my channel so many times does it come with flat packs by default does it come with snaps by default like who cares number one you use the gnome desktop environment that's what you default to and any os that you choose has to have like a good rendition of the gnome desktop environment well, a lot of you do not remember GNOME 2, but I do. GNOME 2 was absolutely awesome. It was my favorite. It, I probably would still use it to this day if it was still around. And no, Mate is not the same as GNOME 2. It just isn't. I'm, I'm sorry. It just doesn't qualify. I'm, I, I know a lot of people might disagree with me. They just say, well, it's really close. Yeah, it is. But it isn't GNOME 2. So it was this guy from Red Hat Linux. He basically said, we're going to make a, a desktop environment specifically for laptops, and we're going to go in a completely different uh, direction. And it pissed off everyone, okay? And GNOME 3 was such a horrible, horrible layout, and nothing worked right, and everybody hated it. If you're going from distro to distro all the time, and you're trying out different GNOME environments, you're a, a noob distro hopper. Okay, so there's one other one that I didn't mention. I haven't mentioned yet, but I'm mentioning it now. And... 
drum roll? Yes. It's when you have like all of these distros on like your desktop or your laptop. You have all these distros installed. I once saw a guy who had over a hundred distros on his laptop. Wait, what? Yes, he had a hundred different distros on his grub menu. I don't know if they all worked. I'm assuming they did. If you ever like watch my 15 years on Linux video, you'll see that I I, I basically um, installed uh, Gen 2 Linux on an old iMac. And I used a couple of general, you know, like I had a browser, I had a couple of things, but I didn't like install like the kitchen sink with this. I just had basic functionality of my computer. And when I installed Ubuntu and realized, oh my God, there's like a whole new world. All of a sudden I wanted to know all about it. I wanted to know what Chakra Linux did, right? And so I had six different distros, maybe eight on my computer because I wanted to see what I liked. And I don't think that that is bad, but I do think that that is an indication that you are a noob distro hopper. Yes. So what do I recommend if you are new? Well, here's the thing. There's a few things you can do. You can take a couple of courses on Linux, learn the command line, learn how things work, fire up different distros in a virtual machine, in Vert Manager, by the way, at the very least, right? And try immutable systems, try systems based on X, try Wayland systems, learn about all of these things, but, the simple fact of the matter is, is you don't have to switch distros. You don't have to distro hop that much to learn about Linux because if you learn the commands. If you run into problems and have to solve them, like what happens when you have a dual graphics card on your laptop? Like, how are you going to navigate that? How are you going to solve that problem? Those are things that, that cause you to learn about Linux. And what about, I'll give you a good example. Ethereum webcam, which is what I'm using right now to record this video. I basically have my cell phone and this app and they're kind of talking to each other and I'm using the camera from my phone. Well, I had to compile Ethereum webcam from source. Oh, yeah. When you have to do things like that, you learn about Linux. But this whole idea that you, hey, I don't like this distro anymore because it did this or it did that. And I, no, that's 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 not how this works. OK, stick with what you have unless you have a good reason to switch. Here's a good caveat where I think it is a good reason to switch Manjaro. And this, I have to say, is my biggest gripe about Manjaro. And it comes from as a maintainer right in the AUR now I'll be honest um, Manjaro is not meant to be used with the AUR it just isn't okay and anyone who tells you any different is lying to you um, please don't use the AUR if you use Manjaro I mean that is just like the most common sense thing ever but I'm gonna tell you if you are maintaining packages in the AUR if you have repos for example I'm gonna tell you that you have to maintain the repos in the AUR for Manjaro twice as often as you do with even Arch Linux probably four times as often as you have to do for um i don't know like ubuntu or fedora and probably eight times as often as you have to with like debian for example man it, it just kind of stinks and this is why i quit using manjaro like over 10 years ago like when it worked and it was firing on all cylinders it was great but when it wasn't, like it seemed to like nothing worked. And I couldn't have that night and day experience, so I quit using Manjaro. I actually went straight to Arch from there. And uh, I found it to be more stable. 
And this is the experience a lot of people have with Manjaro. And for a similar reason, many years later, like 10 years, almost 10 years later, I quit using Arch Linux. And I, I distro hopped for a while until I landed on Fedora. And I'm looking at switching to an immutable desktop. But the only reason why I'm looking at this is because I think that this would actually solve some problems that I have with my laptop. But it isn't that Fedora isn't doing it. Fedora is doing marvelously. And if you ever take a look at my desktop, you can see I run Spectre WM, BSPWM, DWM, a whole bunch of tiling window managers. And I absolutely love it.